United States military has begun strikes against Al Qaeda terrorist training camps. 9-11 was a turning point in how we approach violent extremism. It caused a massive focus on violent extremist attacks and the groups behind it. Meanwhile, the number of violent extremist attacks around the globe has increased. A lot of research has been done on violent extremism and why it happens. For example, trying to understand why people join extremist movements like the Islamic State. In the Prevex project, however, we have turned this upside down and widened the scope, looking also at why people are not radicalized. If we can understand better why people are not radicalized, we can prevent violent extremism from gaining traction and thereby also prevent violence from happening. In the Prevex project, we have been looking at four different regions. The Balkans, the Middle East, North Africa and the Sahel. The social conditions in these regions are seen as a perfect breeding ground for violent extremism. There is high unemployment, lack of resources, weak governments and little possibilities for youth social mobility. So people have a lot of good reasons for being angry. But still we find that most people are not radicalized. How is this possible? It is possible because we also find a counter force in these areas. In local communities, there is a high level of resilience against violent extremism. So what is the foundation of this local resilience? To simplify, let's look at them as ingredients. The first key ingredient needed for local community resilience against violent extremism is a long history of moderation be it moderation in politics, social matters, or religion. The second key ingredient needed is respected local leaders. They can come in the form of a family or an individual leader, but they are the ones that tries to protect this tradition of moderation. However, we have found that a third one is necessary. And the third one is that these leaders, they produce something that the local community find valuable. This adds legitimacy and authority to these local leaders and thereby makes it possible for them to maintain this long tradition of moderation in be it politics, social matters or religion. Together, this is community resilience against violent extremism. Unfortunately, when we try to combat violent extremism, we sometimes unwillingly end up reducing community resilience because the policy implemented undermines local values and thereby destroys the ingredients needed for resilience. The findings from the previous project therefore suggest that we should focus on adding resilience ingredients to exposed and fragile societies. For example, by supporting local community leaders, making it possible for them to contribute to produce something of value to the local communities. However, we must do this with the lightest footprint because they must be their own agents, they cannot be our agents.